Yeah, so um, one of the, I'll, I'll kind of lay out a, a few things that are kind of our, our founding ethos. And one of them is that the, um, there, was, there was a strong need about five, six years ago, and still is today, um, but a strong need that we identified, which was that there is um, a very kind of um, narrow mental map that a lot of theater makers and people who work within institutions have about what actually is theater. Um, there's that, uh, kind of a narrow frame of what theater is and who's out there. And then there's also a kind of the habit and dependency that theater makers have um, on specific institutions for their resources. And um, so those, that, that kind of behavior and um, mental outlook combined with also what was happening in the air around 2011 with um, Occupy and also huge advances that um, the internet had made in terms of open source software, all of that kind of mashed up um, helped us to kind of very much stumble upon and, and a lot accidentally um, around this notion of a peer produced, a commons based peer production, which is something inherent in the internet. And which means that um, the internet has um, created the potential for many people to participate in a way that they've never been able to participate at all. And when it comes to knowledge, and we're a knowledge commons, um, this is a, a, a really, really um, a hugely different model about how, the, how potentially knowledge can be created. And, um, and, and, um, and so we kind of created our frame as being a, a knowledge commons, a digital commons, which means that the resources are uh, created collectively by a community and this common resource is available to all and anyone who wants to participate in it. And the management of this resource, of this commons, is by the community itself. And what we mean by that specifically when we're talking about knowledge and information sharing and conversation, it's that, that it's not our small team of administrators who are in charge of, of, of making selections or being curators in a, very, in a traditional sense. Um, our, our role is to facilitate the community's contributions to the platform. And so you could say that we have a, a, a huge community of editors, a huge community of curators. And so that, that's a, a very different model from the way that our traditional institutions are set up.
beginning and what felt important about creating a website like Spider? Well, uh, well, you know, it, it really ends up with the
Yeah, definitely. It was that, that was very much kind of part of the, the evolution of it, where I would say in the first few months, uh, maybe um, 2011, January, for the first few months, it was very much kind of a, um, in a, in the kind of traditional mode of being um, more like a, a magazine, a, um, and then with, a, with a, a, an editorial figure. And then what started to happen, in which was really interesting, and in how we kind of then came upon and stumbled upon this notion, and then started to really commit to the notion of, of a commons model, was that the commenting started to happen in a way that we never anticipated. And, and so the pieces were not just a one-way direction um, of an essay that's just consumed, but then it, uh, it really opened up the idea of participation and uh, participation in completely new ways and, and around theater conversation, which at that time was, um, it, had, it was in, in various places, but uh, HowlRound somehow kind of managed to, um, to kind of be a, a specific point for that. And, um, and then so, you know, given that and, and our ability to adapt and see those changes and then also with, um, you know, just other things that were in the air and things that we were reading, such as um, Lewis Hyde's Common as Air, and the gift, um, those all kind of really um, uh, kind of, uh, you know, um, melded with our initial DNA. And, and then also at that point, we were based at um, Arena Stage, which the focus was uh, domestically, just on the US. And, um, and then when we moved a year later to um, Emerson College, um, the focus there was um, global, international. And, um, and then we were, in a way, kind of um, figuring out how do we actually um, do that. And it's been, you know, a several year kind of um, journey in, into figuring that out. Um, figuring out how we can, um, you know, be, we happen to be in Boston, but um, the focus is now broadening it, out, broadening it out to outside the U.S. Because there's so many conversations that are happening simultaneously, and, and one of our... 
um, things that we're very much interested in is breaking silos and silos of conversation. I think that that's Harvard, right? Oh, uh, oh, you want me to, uh, oh, no, 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 you want me to talk about that or no? Oh, okay. No, I think I wanted you to affirm what I said. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That, um, that, and that's one of the things about our, our institutions as they're set up is that they are, they're very much set up to first and foremost propagate themselves. And, um, and, and the, and HowlRound is, is, um, you know, its, its agenda is to, in a way, strengthen the field overall. So it didn't make sense to be in a place where, um, where the, the resources and the energy and the attention have to be about uh, self-advancement. Oh yeah, uh, totally. Um, different models, uh, same same end. I think. <laughs> 